Hello and welcome to this first look exploring session looking at Thyestes uh, uh, by Seneca. Uh, it has been translated by Jasper Haywood and was uh, uh, printed in uh, 1560, uh, the second uh, of a line of Senecan uh, translation that occurred in the early lane, reign of uh, Elizabeth I and uh, which had uh, something of a, an impact on the drama that follows. Um, this is slightly outside of our primary uh, thrust of what we do um, because obviously these are these are primarily just uh, straightforward translations but then in the early modern period there's no such thing as a straightforward translation in fact this text has uh, additional chunks that have been added by the playwright Jasper Hayward is the son of our old favorite John Hayward uh, you can who you can listen to the complete works of uh, on uh, as full cast audio adaptations on the podcast um, and so I say we're dipping into uh, the translating work of his son and uh, hopefully we will be doing all of the uh, the 10 tragedies of Seneca as they were later printed in the fi early 1580s um, when they're all collected together and hopefully there won't be too many uh, errors uh, with this particular text um, they have been ridiculously hard in some cases to get a nice clean copy of um, uh, for the room to read so hopefully fingers crossed all is going to be well reading today this happy cheerful happy tale um, reading uh, Tantalus and Thyestes is Stephen Longstaff North Lancashire I think you ought, ought to know I'm feeling very depressed and feeling all the pain in the diodes down the left-hand side. Reading Atreus today is... Lalit from Paris. And reading Megera and Philistines today is... Isa Graham, President of the Galaxy. And reading Servant and Messenger is... Hi, I'll be doing all the footwork. And I'm uh, your host, Robert Crichton, and I know where my towel is. Uh, I will be reading uh, occasional chorus. I may pass some of the choruses around uh, occasionally, but uh, I, uh, otherwise I will be reading those. And we're not going to be stopping too often, as I say. Um, otherwise, we'd just be really assessing Seneca, who's sort of technically outside of our sphere. Um, so, without further ado, we are going to dive into Act 1. And uh, on this uh, hypothetical stage somewhere is Tantalus and... Megera. What fury fell and forces me to flee the unhappy seat that gape and gasp with greedy jaw the fleeing food to eat? What god to Tantalus the bowers where breathing bodies dwell doth show again? Is what found worse than burning thirst of hell in lakes alow? Or yet worse plague than hunger, is there one in vain that ever gapes for food? Shall Sisyphus his stone, that slipper, restless, rolling peas upon my back be borne? Or shall my limbs with swifter swing of whirling wheel be torn? Or shall my pains be tyshous pangs, the increasing liver still? whose growing guts, the gnawing gripes, and filthy fowls do fill. That still, night by, that still by night repairs the paunch that was devoured by day, and wondrous womb unwasted lieth a new prepared prey. What ill am I appointed for? O oh, cruel judge of sprites, whoso thou be that torments new among the soul's delights, ill to dispose. And what canst thou to all my deadly woe, that keeper even of dungeon dark would for abhor to know? For hell itself quakes to see, for dread whereof likewise I tremble would, that plague seek out. O oh, now, there doth arise my brood that shall in mischief father grandsire's guilt outgo and guiltless make that first shall dare unventured ills to do whatever place remaineth yet of all this wicked land i will fill up and never once while pelops hath the stand shall minos idle be go forth thou detestable sprite and vex the gods of wicked house with rage of fury's might. 
Let them contend with all offence by turns, and one by one let swords be drawn, and mean of ire procure there may be none nor shame. Let fury blind inflame their minds and wrathful will. Let yet the parents' rage endure, and longer lasting ill through children's children spread. Nor yet let any leisure be the former fault to hate, but still more mischief new to see, nor one in one but ere the guilt with vengeance be acquit, increase the crime. From brethren proud let rule of kingdom flit to runagates, and serve swerving state of all unstable things, let it by doubtful doom be tossed between the uncertain kings. Let mighty fall to misery, and miser climb to might. Let chance turn the empire upside down, both give and take the right. The banished for guilt when God restore their country shall. Let them to mischief fall afresh as hateful then to all as to themselves. Let ire think not unlawful to be done. Let brother dread the brother's wrath and fathers fear the son. And eke the son his parents' power. Let babes be murdered ill. But worse begot, her spouse be trapped in treasons, trained to kill. Let hateful wife await, and let them bear through seas their war. Let bloodshed lie the lands about and every field afar. And over conquering captains great of countries far to see, let lust triumph in wicked house, let whoredom counted be the lightest offence. Let trust that in the breasts of brethren breeds and truth be gone. Let not from sight of your so heinous deeds the heavens be hid about the pole when shine the stars on high, and flames with wonted beams of light do deck the painted sky. Let darkest night be made, and let the day the heavens forsake. Disturb the gods of wicked house, hate, slaughter, murder make. Fill up the house of Tantalus with mischiefs and debates. Adorned be the pillars high, with adorned be the pillars high with bay, and let the gates be garnished green, and worthy there for thy return to sight. Be kindled fire, let mischief done in Thracia once, their light more manifold. Wherefore doth yet the uncle's hand delay? Doth yet Thyestes not bewail his children's fatal day? Shall he not find them where with heat of fires that underglow the cauldron boils? Their limbs each one a pieces let them go, dispersed. Let father's fires with blood of children filed be. Let dainties such be dressed. It is no mischief new to thee to banquet so. Behold, this day we have to thee released, and hunger starved womb of thine we send to such a feast. With foulest food thy famine fill, let blood in wine be drowned, and drunk in sight of thee, lo, now. Such dishes have I found as thou wouldst shun. Stay. Whither dost thou had long way now take? To pools and floods of Halligan, and still declining lake, and flight of tree full freight with fruit that from the lips doth flee. To dungeon dark of hateful hell let lethal be for me to go. Or if to light be thought the pains that there I have, remove me from these lakes again. In midst of worse a wave of Phlegathon, to stand in seas of fire beset to be, who so beneath thy pointed pains by destiny's decree doth still endure who so, who so thou be that underliest allow the hollow den or ruin who that fears and overthrow of falling hill or cruel cries that sound in gate caves of hell of greedy roaring lions throats or flocks of furies fell who quakes to know or who the brands of fire in direst pain half burnt throws off Hark to the voice of Tantalus again, that hastes to hell, and whom the truth hath taught believe well me, love well your pains. They are but small, when shall my hap so be to flee the light? Mm, disturb thou first this house with dire discord, 
Debates and battles bring with thee, and of the unhappy sword, ill love to kings. The cruel breasts strike through, and hateful heart, with tumult mad. To suffer pains, it seemeth well my part, not woes to work. I am sent forth like vapour, dire to rise, that breaks the ground, or, or poison like the plague in wondrous wise, that slaughter makes. Shall I to such detested crimes apply my nephew's hearts? Oh, parents great of gods above the sky, and mine, no shamed I be to grant, although with greater pain my tongue be vexed, yet this to speak I may no whit refrain nor hold my peace. I warn you, this least sacred hand, with blood of slaughter dire, or frenzy fell of frantic fury, wood that alters stain, I will resist, and guard such guilt away. With stripes, why dost thou me affright? Why threat'st thou me to fray these crawling snakes, or famine fixed in empty womb, wherefore thou dost revive? Now fries within with thirst, and kindle sore my heart, and in the bowels burnt the boiling flames do glow. I follow thee. Through all this house now rage and fury throw. Let them be driven so, and so let either thirst to see each other's blood. Full well hath felt the coming in of thee this house, and all with wicked touch of thee begun to quake. Enough it is. Repair again to dense and loathsome lake of flood well known. The sadder soil with heavy foot of thine aggrieved is. Seest thou from springs how waters do decline and inward sink, or how the banks lie void by droughty, droughty heat, and hotter blast of fiery wind the few, fewer clouds doth beat. The trees be spoiled, and naked stand to sight in withered woods, the barren boughs whose fruits are fled, the land between the floods, with surge of seas on either side that wanted to resound, and nearer fords to separate sometime with lesser ground, now broader spread. It heareth how aloof the waters rise. Now Lerna turns against the stream Pharonides likewise, his pores be stopped. With customed course, Alpheus drives not still his holy waves. The trembling tops of high Cithaeron hill, they stand not sure. From height adown they shake their silver snow. And noble fields of Argos fear their former drought to know. Yea, Titan doubts himself to roll the world his wonted way, and drive by force to former course the backward drawing day. This Argus town, if any god be found, and PC bowers that famous yet remain, or kingdoms else to love of Corinth's ground, the double havens or sundered sea is in twain, if any love of Tegethus' snows by winter, which when they on hills be cast by Boreas blasts that from Sarmatia blows, with yearly breath the summer melts so fast, where clear Alpheus runs with flood so cold, by plays well known that their Olympics height, let pleasant power of his from hence withhold such turns of strife that here they may not light, nor nephew worse than grandsire spring from us, or dire deeds delight the younger age. Let wicked stock of thirsty Tantalus at length leave off and weary be of rage. Enough is done, and naught prevailed the just or wrong. Betrayed is Myrtilus and drowned that did betray his dame, and like with like trust, born as he bare, himself hath made renowned with changed name the sea and better known to mariners thereof no fable is. On wicked sword the little infant thrown as ran the chide to take his father's kiss, unripe for the altar's offering, fell down dead, and with thy hand, O Tantalus, was rent, with such a meat for gods thy boards to spread. 
Eternal famine for such food is sent and thirst, nor for those dainty meats unmild might meter pain appointed ever be with empty throat. Stands Tantalus beguiled, above thy wicked head there leans to thee. Then Finney's fowls in flight a swifter prey. With burdened boughs declined on every side, and of his fruits all bent to bear the sway, the tree deludes the grapes of hunger wide, though he, full greedy, feed thereon would fain. So oft deceived, neglects to touch them yet, he turns his eyes, his jaws he doth refrain, and famine fixed, enclosed gums doth shed, but then each branch, his plenteous riches all, let slower down, and apples from on high, with lither leaves they flatter like to fall, and famine stir in vain that bids to try his hands, which when he have wrought forth anon to be beguiled in higher air again, the harvest hangs and fickle fruit is gone, then thirst him grieves no less than hunger's pain, wherewith when kindled is his Boiling blood like fire, the wretch that waves to him doth call, that meets his mouth, which straight the fleeing flood withdraws, and from the dried ford doth fall, and him forsakes that follows them. He drinks the dust so deep of gulf that from him shrinks. And we're going straight on into Act 2, and we have Atreus and Servant. Oh, dastard, coward, oh, wretch, and, which the greatest yet of all, to tyrants check, I compt that may in weighty things befall, oh, unrevenged, after guilt so great and brother's guile. And truth trod down, dost thou provoke with vain complaints the while thy wrath? Already now to rage all Argus town throughout in armour aught of thine, and all the double seas about thy fleet to ride. Now all the fields with fervent flames of thine, and towns to flash it well beseen, and everywhere to shine the bright dawn sword. All under foot of horse let every side of Argus land resound, and let the wounds not serve to hide our foes, nor yet in haughty top of hills and mountains high the builded towers. The people all let them to battle cry and clear forsake Mycenaeus' town, who so his hateful head hides and defends with slaughter dire that blood of him be shed. This princely Pelops palace proud and bowers of high renown on me so on my brother to let them be beaten down go to do that which never shall no after age allow, nor none it wished. Some wishes great there must be ventured now, both fierce and bloody, such as would my brother rather long to have been his. Thou never dost enough revenge the wrong, except thou pass, and fierce a fact what may be done so dire that his exceeds. Doth ever he lay down his hateful ire? Doth ever he the modest mean in time of wealth regard, or quiet and in adversity? I know his nature hard, untractable, that broke may be, but never will it bend. For which are he prepare himself, or force to fight intend, set first on him, least while I rest he should on me arise. He will destroy or be destroyed in midst of the mischief lies, Prepare to him that takes it first. Doth fame of people not adverse thee fear? The greatest good of kingdom may be thought, but still the people are constrained their prince's deeds as well to praise as then to suffer all. Whom fear doth so compel to praise, the same his foes to be, doth fear and force again. But who indeed the glory seeks and favor true to obtain, he rather would with hates of each be praised than tongues of all. The truer praise full oft hath hapt to meaner men to fall. The false but unto mighty man what nil they let them will. Let first the king will honest things and none the fame dare nil. Where lethal are to him that rules but honest things alone, 
their range the king by others leave and there that and where that shame is none nor care of right faith piety nor holiness none stayeth that kingdom swerves such holiness such piety and faith are private goods let kings run one in that let kings run one in that that likes their will the brothers hurt a mischief count though he ne'er be so ill he be near so ill it is but right to do him that wrong to brother were what heinous hurt hath his offence let pass to prove or where refrained the guilt thy spouse he stale away for lechery and reign by stealth the ancient note and sign of empery by fraud he got my house by fraud to vex he never ceased in pelop's house there fostered is a noble worthy beast the close-kept ram the goodly guide of rich and fairest flocks by whom throughout on every side depend adown the locks of glittering gold with fleece of which the new kings wonted were of tantal stock their sceptres gilt and mace of might to beat of this the owner reigneth he and with him house so great the fortune fleeth this sacred ram aloof in safety shut in secret mead is wont to graze which stone on every side with rocky wall encloseth round the fatal beast to hide this beast adventuring mischief great adjoining yet for prey my spoused mate the traitor false hath hence conveyed away in exiled wandered he and so from hence the wrongs of mutual hate and mischiefs all upsprung in exiled wandered he throughout my kingdoms all along no part of mine remaineth safe to me from trains of his my fear deflowered and loyalty of empire broken is my house all vexed my blood in doubt and naught that trust is in but brother foe what stays thou yet at length lo now begin take heart of tantalus to thee to pelops cast thine eye to such examples well beseems i should my hand apply tell thou which way were best to bring that cruel head to death uh, through pierced with sword let him be slain and yield his hateful breath thou speak'st of the end but him i would oppress with greater pain let tyrants vex with torments more should ever in my reign be gentle death doth piety in thee prevail no whit depart thou hence all piety if in this house as yet thou ever wert and now let all the flock of furies dire and full of strife erinus come and double brands of fire meagre is shaking for not yet enough with fury great and rage doth burn my boiling breast it ought to be replete with monster more uh, what mischief new dost thou in rage provide not such a one as may the mean of wonted grief abide no guilt will i forbear nor none may, may be enough despite what sword too little that what fire and that is yet too what weapon then shall sorrow find fit to work thy will thyestes self then ire itself yet that's a greater ill i grant a tumbling tumult quakes within my bosom's low and round it rolls i moved am and what not where unto but drawn i am from bottom deep the roaring soil doth cry the day so fair with thunder sounds and houses all from high were rent from roof and rafters cracks and lares turned about have ride their sight so be it so be it let mischief such be sought as ye o gods would fear what thing seeks thou to bring to pass i note what greater thing my mind and more than want it was above the reach that men are wont to work begins to swell and stareth with slothful hands what thing it is i cannot tell but great it is be it so my mind mind now in this feat proceed for atreus and thyestes both it were a worthy deed 
let each of us the crime commit. The Thracian house did see such wicked tables once. I grant them mischief great to be, but done ere this, some greater guilt and mischief more, let I find out. The stomach of thy son, O father, thou inspire, and sister eke, like is the cause, assist me with your power and drive my hand. Let greedy parents all his babes devour, and glad to rent his children be, and on their limbs to feed. Enough, and well it is devised, this pleaseth me indeed. In meantime, where is he, so long and innocent, wherefore doth Atreus walk? Before mine eyes already more and more the shade of such a slaughter walks, the want of children cast in father's jaws, but why, my mind, yet dreadst thou so at last, and faints before thou enterprise? It must be done. Let be, that which in all this mischief is the greatest guilt to see, let him commit. But what deceit may we for him prepare, whereby be trapped he may be drawn to fall into the snare? He wots full well we are his foes. He could not take and be, except himself would take. But now my kingdom's hopeth he, for hope of this he would not fear to meet the mighty Jove, though him he threatened to destroy with lightning from above. For hope of this to pass, the threats of waves he will not fail, nor dread no wit by doubtful shelves of Liebig seas to sail. For hope of this, which thing he doth the worst of all believe, he will his brother see. Who shall of peace the promise give? Whom will he trust? His evil hope will soon believe it well. Yet to my sons the charge which they shall to their uncle tell, we will commit. That whom we would from exile come again, and miseries the kingdom change, and over Argos reign a king of hearth. And though to hard of heart our prayers all himself despise, his children yet not wanting what may fall, with travels tired and apt to be enticed from misery, requests will move. On the one side his desire of empery, on the other side his poverty and labour hard to see will, sub will him subdue and make to yield, though full stout he be. His travails now the time he hath made his travails now the time hath made to seem to him but small. Not so, for day by day the grief of ill increaseth all. Tis light to suffer miseries, but heavy to them endure. Yet other messengers to send in such affairs procure. The younger sort the worst precepts do easily hearken to. What thing against their uncle now you instruct them to do? Perhaps with you to work the like they will not be a dread. Such mischief wrought hath oft returned upon the worker's head. Though never to man them the ways of guile and guilt have taught, yet kingdom will. Fierce thou they should be made by counsel naught. They are so born. That which thou callst a cruel enterprise, and direly deems done to be, and wickedly likewise, perhaps is wrought against me there. And shall your sons of this deceit beware that work you will? No secretness there is in their so green and tender years, they will your trains disclose. A privy council close to keep is learned with many woes. And will ye them by whom you would he should beguiled be themselves beguiled? May let them both from fault and blame be free. For what shall need in mischief such as I to work intend to mingle them? Let all my hate by me alone take end. Thou leav'st thy purpose ill my mind. If thou thine own forbear, thou sparest him. Wherefore of this let Agamemnon here be minister, and client eke of mine for such a deed, let Menelaus present be. Truth of the uncertain seed by such a practice may be tried, if it refuse, they shall, nor of debate will bearers be, if they him uncle call. He is their father, let them go. But much the fearful face bewrays itself, 
Even him that feigns the secret weighty case doth oft betray. Let them therefore not know how great a guile they go about. And thou these things in secret keep a while. I need not warn it be, for these within my bosom deep, both faith and fear, but chiefly faith, uh, doth shut and closely keep. The noble house at length of high renown, the famous stock of ancient Inachus, appeased and laid the threats of brethren down. But now, what fury stirs and drives you thus? Each one to thirst, the other's blood again, or get by guilt the golden mace in hand? Ye little wot that so desire to reign in what estate or place doth kingdoms stand, nor riches makes a king or high renown, not garnished weed with purple Tyrian dye, not lofty looks, or head enclosed with crown, not glittering beams with golden turrets high. A king he is, that fear hath laid aside, and all effects that in the breast are bred, whom impotent ambition doth not guide, nor fickle favour hath of people led, nor all that west in metals mines have found, or channel clear of golden tagus shows, nor all the grain that threshed is on the ground, that with the heat of Libic harvest glows, nor whom the flash of lightning flame shall be aid nor western wind that smites upon the seas, nor swelling surge with rage of wind replete, or greedy gulf of Adria displease, whom not the prick of soldier's sharpest spear or pointed pike in hand hath made to rue, nor whom the glimpse of sword might cause to fear, or bright drawn blade of glittering steel subdue, who in the seat of safety sets his feet beholds all haps how under him they lie and gladly runs his fatal day to meet nor aught complains or grudgeth for to die though present were the princes every one the scattered stakes to chase that wanted be that shining seas beset with precious stone and red sea coasts do hold like blood to sea or they which else the caspian mountains high from sarmat strong with all their power withhold or he that on the flood of danube in frost afoot to travel dare be bold or ceres in whatever place they lie renowned with fleece that there of silk doth spring they never might the truth hereof deny that is the mind that only makes a king there is no need of sturdy steeds in war no need with arms or arrows else to fight that parthus wants with bow to fling from far while from the field he falsely feigneth flight nor yet to see no need it is to bring great guns in carts to overthrow the wall that from far of their battering pellets sling a king he is that feareth naught at all each man himself this kingdom gives at hand who so list with mighty maester reign in tickle top of court delight to stand let me the sweet and quiet rest obtain so set in place obscure and low degree of pleasant rest i shall the sweetness know my life unknown to them that noble be shall in the step of secret silence go thus when my days at length are overpast and time without all troubles tumult spent an aged man i shall depart at last in mean estate to die full well content but grievous is to him the death that when so far abroad the brute of him is blown that known he is too much to other men, departeth yet unto himself unknown. And there we will pause at the end of Act 2. We've had two acts. We've had the pretexts, the godly set up, and we've had what's sort of going on on the ground. Um... Thoughts on the room. Uh, obviously, this is a uh, translation of Seneca. It's designed for publication. It's not necessarily designed for performance. I rather enjoyed it, but uh, it's it it does keep coming at you. Um, you know, it's, it is uh, it is just unrelenting um, at times. Um, thoughts on the room. Who wants to leap in? 
Yeah, the speeches are just so damn long. <laughs> You know, I, 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 as I was reading it, I kept trying to think, could, could this be cut? Could this be cut? Because <laughs> it, it's because it's not kind of chopped up with much dialogue. I mean, there's a bit from the sermon, but it's it's almost like one operatic aria after another. Hmm. Well, we found with any of the neoclassical stuff, and this is technically actually classical yeah. stuff, um, is yeah. that it, it's partly about what, what is going on between the two speakers, uh, even if the, one of them is mostly silent. Um, and yeah. uh, trust me, we've got longer speeches than this. This is nothing. Yeah. You want long speeches? We can find you long speeches. Um, but yeah, that relationship between Atreus and the servant there, um, which is much more That's interesting. dialogue-y than... Um, than, yeah. uh, than uh, our uh, good old Tantalus, uh, which is much more uh, straight speech at each other. Uh, Stephen? I, I wonder also, I mean, somebody probably has the languages for this, but the, it does seem to me to be um, Latinate in the sense of word order. It's, it makes it very difficult to to follow some of those sentences because, you know, the... The kind of key word isn't where you'd expect it to be. You know, you, you end up having to kind of plough through lots and lots of um, subclauses or uh, smaller units in order to get to the bit that makes sense to you. I don't know if it's Latinate or not. I mean, if it were, then it would be projecting kind of authenticity to everybody who knew the Latin, I suppose. You know, this is what Seneca English sounds like. But but nonetheless, I found it I found it very difficult to follow when I was reading it. Um, mm. I found it very difficult to make sense of the bits that I was doing. And um, and I also, I had to go away and, and look the plot up because I didn't have a clue what was going on. Mm. Certainly, in, certainly in the first act, you know, I didn't know what Tantalus was doing there at all. So, Revenge. Well, <laughs> what we need is a croaking raven just to put us all on track, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I um, confess I'm really, I'm really curious now to see Carol Churchill's version of this because I mm. read that she did a direct translation from the Latin. Mm. And yeah, but I mean, Stephen's point is really interesting. Yeah, it, it, you sort of get figure out what the speech is about once you've finished it, and you sort of go, yeah. you know, or or the you figure out where your sentence is going once it's done. Um, I, I I was I struggled with the first chorus. I really hadn't really got a, a handle on where that was going for most of it was well, so i quite liked the uh the, the the second chorus you know just about content and you know how how i'm I, i'm gonna go off and be happy even if nobody else will uh i will be the king of my own kingdom um uh, um, 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 um kind of stuff um but yeah i i quite like the um who should know about this horrible plot that you've got going master oh i think we'll keep it just between <laughs> ourselves i think we'll <laughs> Are you going to tell your extended yeah, family? I nah. I, you know what? I think yeah. I, I, I think they might not go down well. Um. It's a little bit Marty yeah. uh, Marty Feldman, isn't it? In Young Frankenstein, it's kind of like, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, yes, you're right about only getting the sense at the end because there are times where I got to the end and I thought, oh damn, I should have read it this other way, and, and then it's too late. So you, even though I read it all through beforehand, I, I still found kind of crawling through it a second time I was getting lost this this is the nature of a cold read and very much a beyond Shakespeare thing it's like mm. l'esprit du end of speech <laughs> yeah. yeah um but it, it, again it, it does have this it does have a momentum and it does have a dynamism that is 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 quite I mean as I said in the chat I was sort of I was having I was it was quite fun which of course is supposed to be it's not supposed to be fun in that way. I was sort of enjoying the, the technique. fun. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's going to say. You had great fun. <laughs> yes, hi. Let me ruin everybody's life. Shall we destroy people's lives? Yay. I cast again. <laughs> but, but what's so difficult is starting so intense. So how do you go from intense to like even more intense? You know, that's what's really difficult. So you have to find these moments of dipping into a kind of quiet scheming or a reflection or anything to kind of vary the kind of sheer anger that's the, the keynote of the whole thing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Eric, were you waving? 
I was gonna mention that a lot of the. I mean, obviously, some of the references seem a bit like, um, like Seneca did some research and just threw them in there. <laughs> well, it's either Seneca or um, Haywood. I don't know, one of the two. Because it's like, look, yes, we have the Caspian Mountains and Flood of Danube and Ceres and and guns and carts and uh, how do you call it and um the the adriatic gulf and it's like okay i mean i don't know if this is in the original but like i'm sure that there's some kind of i don't know um, it just feels very like it, it, does, it does feel well traveled or well read i'm pretty sure the guns were not seneca yeah, I was going to say the guns. The the the, the 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 I'm going to say that. Yeah, I think Lice is right there. That 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 leapt out of me. Going, that doesn't feel desperately classical. <laughs> Would be a typo for gnus. Um, I don't think it. I think I'd, uh, I will. I will have a quick. Um, well, it could also be like if Seneca translated it from the Greek, then it's opera, which means like you know weapons and not not necessarily like guns. They, they did have sense. they did have siege engines, and, it, mm. and the metaphor is of a siege. So they had like stone throwers and bolt throwers. Mm. I did, and that's a, that's a question that you know it's, it's it's an interesting question of which it's not quite our our area really. Uh, but, you know how what is the difference between the original text and you know how faithful is uh, is Jasper being or is he going wildly you know of, on his own journey um, and what's the difference and where, how do they all sort of flow together so um, yeah um. It is, it is, those long speeches are, they are very like singing in the sense that you mm. If you're not, you know, like I'm not a trained anything and I just sort of take a deep breath and hope that I get to the end of the bit before my breath runs out. <laughs> you know, so, I, I'm, so obviously if you learn the lines, the, the, the breath is, is incorporated into the line learning. But it's another problem for the cold read, I think. Mm. I've, yeah. I've, I've just had a quick look at my next speech and I think I've got four lines before I actually get to the point of the speech. Mm. <laughs> It's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, on that on that note of that technical challenge, uh, Eric, uh, briefly, and then we'll go on to Act Three. Yeah, I, I just wanted to highlight that moment of uh, what do you call it? Um, the the servant hand, like sort of. Oh yes, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I I won't tell anyone. You know, both faith, but and fear, but but chiefly faith. You know, it's kind of like you know, I'm I'm not terrified of you. I just you know, trust you, not. Um, it just, yeah, I just like that moment, which is kind of random in the middle of a tragedy. <clears throat> yeah. Um, okay, let's go into Act 3, Scene 1. We have more than one scene in Act 3, and it's uh, Thyestes, title title character, uh, making an appearance uh, along with Th Thylistenes. My country bowers so long wished for, and Argos riches all. Chief good that unto banish then, and misers may befall, the touch of soil where born I was, and gods of native land, if gods say be. The sacred towers I see of Cyclops' hand, that represent in all man's work a greater majesty. Renowned steadies to my youth, where noble sometime I have not so sailed as once, the palm in father's chariot won. All Argos now to meet with me, and people fast will run, but Atreus to yet rather lead in woods again thy flight, and bushes thick and hid among the brutish beasts from sight like life to theirs, where splendid pomp of court, a princely pride, may not with flattering fulgent face allure thine eyes aside, with whom the kingdom given is, behold and well regard, beset but late with such mishaps as all men count full hard, I stout and joyful was. But now again, thus into fear I am returned. My mind misdoubts, and backwards seeks to bear my body hence. And forth I draw my pace against my will. With slothful step, what meaneth this? My father standeth still, turns his face, and holds himself in doubt what thing to do. What thing, my mind, considerest thou, or else so long whereto dost thou so easy counsel rest? Will 
thou to things unsure thy brother and the kingdom trust? And fearest thou those ills to endure now overcome and milder made? And travails dost thou flee that were well were placed? The avails a miser now to be. Turn hence thy pace while lethal is, keep thee from his hand. What cause thee drives, O father dear, thus from thy native land, now seen to shrink? What makes thee thus from th things so good at last withdraw thyself? Thy brother comes, whose ires be overpassed, and half the kingdom gives, and of the house dilacerate, repairs the parts, and thee restores again to former state. The cause of fear, that I know not, that thou dost request, require to hear. I see nothing that makes me dread, and yet I greatly fear. I would go on, but yet my limbs with weary legs do slack, and other way then I would pass, and withholden back. So, off the ship that driven is with wind and eke with oar, the swelling surge resisting both beats back upon the shore. Yet overcome whatever stays, and thus doth let your mind and see what are at your return prepared for you to find. You may, O oh father, reign. I may, but then when die I mot. Chief thing is power. Not worth at all, if thou desire it not. You shall it to your children leave. Ah, the kingdom takes not twain. <sighs> who may be happy, who may be happy, rather would he miser yet remain? Believe me well, with titles false, the great things us delight, and heavy haps in vain are feared, while high I stood in sight. I never stinted then to quake, and self same sort to fear that angered by mine own side was. Oh, how great good it were with none to strive, but careless food to eat and rest to know. The greater guilts they enter not in cottage set alow. Safe the food is fed upon at narrow board all way. Of drinking gold the poison is by proof well taught, I say. That evil hats before the good to love it likes my will. A haughty house that stands aloft in tickle top of hill and sways aside a city low, he'd never be a fright. Nor in the top of roof above there shines no ivory bright, nor watchman none defends my sleeps by night. For guards my rest, with fleet I fish not, nor the seas I have not backward pressed, nor turned to flight with builded wall, nor wicked belly I with taxes of the people fed, nor parcel none does lie of ground of mine beyond the geats and Parthians far about, nor worship with frankincense I am, nor Jove shed out, my altars decked are. Nor oh, none in top of house to stand in garden trees, nor kindled yet with help of each man's hand that bathes to smoke. Nor yet are days in slothful slumbers led, nor nights passed forth in watch and wine without the rest of bed. In nothing fear, the house is safe without the hidden night. The poor estate, the sweetness feels of test and quiet life. Great kingdom is to be content without the saint and live. Yet should it not refuse it be, if God the kingdom give? Yet desired it ought to be. Your brother bids you reign. Bids he? The more is to be feared, there lurketh there some train. From whence it fell, yet piety is wont to turn at length, and love unfeigned repairs again his erst omitted strength. Does Atreus then his brother love? Each Ursa first on his. The seas shall wash, and swelling surge of seas of Sicily shall rest, and all assuaged be, and corn to ripeness grow in bottom of Ionian seas. The dark, darkest night shall show and spread the light about the soil. The waters with the fire, the life with the death, the wind with seas shall friendship first require and be at league. Of what deceit are you so dreadful here? Of every one. What end at length might I provide of fear? In all he can, he hateth me. To you what hurt can he? 
for myself, I nothing dread. You little babes make me afraid of him. Dread ye to be beguiled when caught ye are. Too late it is to shun the train in middle of the snare. But go we on, this father is to you my last request. I follow you, I lead you not. God turn it to the best that well devise it is for good. Pass forth with cheerful grace. And Act 3, Scene 2, we have the entrance of Atreus to Thyestes. Entrapped in train, the beast is caught, and in the snare doth fall. Both him and eke of hated stock with him the offspring all, about the father's side I see. And now in safety stands and surest ground my wrathful hate. Now comes into my hands at length Thyestes. Yea, he comes, and all at once to me. I scant refrain myself, and scant may anger bridled be. So, when the bloodhound seeks the beast, by step and quick of scent draws in the lean, and pace by pace to wind the ways he went with nose to soil doth hunt, while he the boar aloof hath found far off by scent, he yet refrains and wanders through the ground with silent mouth. But when at hand he once perceives the prey, with all the strength he hath he strives with voice and calls away his lingering master, and from him by force outbreaketh he. When ire doth hope the present blood, it may not hidden be. Yet let it hidden be, behold with ugly hair to sight, how irksomely deformed with filth his foulest face is dight how loathsome lies his beard unkempt but let us friendship feign to see my brother me delights give now to me again embracing long desired for whatever strife there was before this time between us twain forget and let it pass for this day forth let Brother's love, let blood and law of kind regarded be. Let all debate be slacked in either's mind. I could excuse myself, except thou wert as now thou art. But, Atreus, now I grant the fault was mine in every part, and I offended have in all my cause the worst to be. Your this day's kindness makes. Indeed, a guilty wight is he that would so good a brother hurt as you in any wit. But now with tears I must entreat, and first I may submit. These hands that at thy feet do lie, do thee beseech and pray, that ire and hate be laid aside, and from thy bosom may be scraped out. For pledges, take thou these, and brother dear, these guiltless bay. Thy hands yet from my knees remove, and rather me to take in arms upon me fall, and ye, O aids of elder age, ye little infants all, me clip and cull about the neck, this foul attire forsake, and spare mine eyes that pity it, and fresher vesture take, like mine to see, and you with joy, the half of empery, dear brother, take. The greater praise shall come to me thereby, our father's seat to yield to you, and brother to relieve. To have a kingdom is but chance, but virtue it to give. A just reward for such deserts the gods, O brother dear, repay to thee. For on my head a regal crown to wear, my loathsome life denies. And far doth from the sceptre flee my hand unhappy. In the midst let leave will be for me of men to lurk. This kingdom can with twain full well agree. Whatever it is, O oh brother yours, I count it mine to be. Who would Dame Fortune's gifts refuse, if she him raise to reign? The gifts of her, each man it wots, how soon they pass again. Ye me deprive of glory great, except ye the empire take. 
ye have your praise in offering it. And I it to forsake, and full persuaded to refuse the kingdom am I still. Except your part we, we will sustain, mine own forsake I will. I take it then, and bear I will the name thereof alone, the rights and arms as well as mine, they shall be yours each one. The regal crown as you beseems upon your head then take, and I the pointed sacrifice for gods will now go make. Would any man it ween that cruel white Atreus of mine so impotent to see was soon astonished? Astonied with his brother's sight, no greater force than piety may be, where kindred is not, lasteth every threat. Whom true love holds, it holds eternally. The wrath but late, which with causes kindled great, all favour break, and did to battle cry, when horsemen did resound on every side. The swords each wear, then glistered more and more, which raging Mars with often stroke did guide the fresher sword to shed yet thirsting sore. The love, but love the sword against their wills doth swage, and them to peace persuades with hand in hand. So sudden rest amid so great a rage, what God hath made throughout my Cenus land, the harness clinked but late of civil strife. And for their babes did fearful mother quake, Her armed spouse to lease much feared the wife, When sword was made the scabbard to forsake, That now by rest with rust was overgrown, Some to repair the walls that did decay, And some to strength the towers half overthrown, And some the gates with gins of iron to stay, Full busy were, and dreadful watch by night From turret high did overlook the town. Worse is than war itself the fear of fight. Now are the threats of cruel sword laid down, And now the rumour wists of battles sown, The noise of crooked trumpets, silent lies, And quiet peace returns to joyful town. So when the waxes of swelling surge arise, while chorus wind the Brutian seas doth smite, And Scylla sounds from hollow caves within, And shipmen are with wafting waves of right, Carabdis casts that erst it had drunk in, And Cyclops fierce his father yet doth dread, In Etna bank that fervent is with heats, Lest quenched be with flames that overshed The fire that from eternal furnace beats, and poor Laertes thinks his kingdom's all may drowned be, and Ithaca doth shake. It, if once the force of winds begin to fall, the scene lies down more mild than standing lake, the deep where ships so wide full dreadful were to pass, with sails on either side outspread, now fallen adown the lesser boat doth bear, and leisure is to view the fishes dead, even there. Where late with tempest bet upon the shaken Salides were with seas aghast. No state endures the pain and pleasure one to other yields, and joys be soonest past. One hour sets up the things that lowest be. He that the crowns to princes doth divide, whom people please with bending of the knee, and at whose beck their battles lay aside. The Medes and the Indians eke to Phoebus nigh, And Darces that Parthians do with horsemen threat, Himself yet holds his sceptres doubtfully, And men of mighty fears and chances great, That each estate may turn and doubtful hour. O ye, whom lord of land and waters wide, Of life and death grants here to have the power, Lay ye your proud and lofty looks aside, What your inferior fears of you amiss, that your superior threats to you again, to greater king, each king a subject his, whom dawn of day have seen in pride to reign, him overthrown hath seen the evening late. Let none rejoice too much that good hath got, let none despair of best in worst estate, for Clotho mingles all, and suffereth not fortune to stand, but fates about doth drive, such friendship might with gods, yet no man might, That he the morrow might be sure to live. The god 
are things all tossed and turned quite rolls with a whirlwind. Act four, enter messenger to chorus. What whirlwind may me headlong drive and up in air me fling? And wrap in darkest cloud whereby it might so heinous thing take from mine eyes. A wicked house that even from Pelops and Ort and Tantalus abhorred be. What new thing hast thou brought? What land is this? L Lith Sparta here in Argos that hath bred so wicked brethren? And the ground of Corinth lying spread between the seas? Or is there else where wont to take their flight? Are people wild? Or that which wants with snow to shine so bright here can a land? Or else do hear the wandering Scythians dwell? What monstrous mischief is this place then guilty of? That tell, and this declare to us at large, whatever be the ill. If once my mind may stay itself in quaking limbs, I will. But yet of such a cruel deed before mine eyes the fear, and image walks ye raging storms now far from hence me bear, and to that place me drive, to which is now driven the day that's drawn from hence. Our minds ye hold yet still in doubt, full stay. Tell what it is ye so abhor, the author thereof show. I ask not who, but which of them that quickly let us know. In Pelops turret high, there, a palace, a part there is a palace wide, that toward the south erected leans, of which the outer side with equal top to mountain stands, and on the city lies, and people proud against their prince, if once the traitors rise, hath underneath his battering stroke. There shines the place in sight where want the people to frequent, whose golden beams so bright the noble spotted pillars grey of marble do support. Within this place, well known to men, where they oft so, where they soft, uh, where they so oft resort, to many other rooms about the court, noble court doth go. The privy palace underlieth in secret place allow, which with ditch full deep that doth enclose the wood of privity, and hidden parts of kingdom old, where never grew no tree that cheerful boughs is wont to bear with knife or lopped bee, but tax in cypress, and with tree of holm full black to see, doth beck and bend the wood so dark. Aloft above all these, the higher oak over, doth overlook, surmounting all the trees. From hence with luck the rain to take. Accustomed are the kings, from hence in danger aid to ask and doomful and doubtful things. To this affixed are the gifts, the sounding trumpets bright, the chariots broke and spoils of sea that now return height. There hang the wheels that once won by craft of false or axle tree, and every other conquest's note here lethal is to see. The Phrygian tire of Pelop's head, the spoil of enemies here, and of barbarian triumph left the painted gorgeous gear. A loathsome spring un stands under shade, and slothful course doth take with water black even such as is the first obstidian lake the un ugly wave whereby art wont to swear the gods on high here all the nights the grisly ghosts and gods of death decry the fame reports with clinking chains resounds the wood each where the sprites cry out and <laughs> everything that dreadful is to hear may there be seen of ugly shapes from old sepulchres sent. A fearful flock doth wander there, and in that place frequent worse things than ever were yet known. Ye, yea, all the wood full oft with flame is wont to flash, and all the higher trees aloft without a fire do burn, and oft the wood beside all this with triple barking roars at once. Full oft the pal palace is fright with shapes, nor a light of day may on the terror quell. Eternal night doth hold the place, and darkness there of hell and midday reigns. From hence to them that pray out of the ground, the certain answers given are. What time with dreadful sound from secret place the fates be told, and dungeon roars within 
while from the, while of the god breaks out the voice where to when entered in fierce atreus was that did with him his brother's children trail decked are the altars who alas may it enough bewail behind the infants backs and on he knit their noble hands and eke their heavy heads about he bound with purple bands there wanted there no frankincense, nor yet the holy wine, nor knife to cut the sacrifice, be sprinkled with leavens fine, kept in, in all the order due, lest such a mischief get. Gret should not be ordered well. Who doth his hand on sword then set? He is himself the priest, and he himself the deadly verse, with prayer dire from fervent mouth doth sing and oft rehearse. And he at the altar stands himself, he them assigned to die, doth handle, and in order set to the knife apply. He lights the fires, no rites were left of sacrifice undone. The wood then quaked, and all at once from trembling ground anon, the palace becked. In doubt which way the peace thereof would fall. And shaking as if in waves it stood from there and there with all, and the blazing star that Fowl's train drew after him doth go. The wines that in the fires were cast with changed liquor flow and turned to blood. And twice or thrice the tire fell from his head, the ivory bright in temples seemed to weep and tears to shed. The sights amazed all other men, but steadfast, yet a way of mind. Unmoved Atreus stands and even the gods doth fray that threaten him and all delay forsaken by and by to the altar's turns. And therewithal the side, side he looks awry as hungry tiger wants that cloth in, that doth in Gange woods remain with doubtful pace to range and roam with, between the bullocks twain. Of either prey the full covetous and yet uncertain where she may first bite and roaring throat now turns the ton now turns the ton to tear and then t'other straight returns and doubtful famine holds so atreus dire between the babes doth stand and then beholds on whom he points to slake his ire first slaughter where to make he doubts and or whom he should again for second offering take, yet skills it not, but yet he doubts and such cruelty at him delights to order well. Whom take ye first to die? First place, least in him ye th think ye might no piety to remain. It's grandsire dedicated is, first Tantalus is slain. With what a mind and countenance could ye, boy, his death sustain? All careless of himself he stood, not, nor once would he in vain his prayers lease. But Atreus, Atreus feel, fierce the sword in him at last in deep, and deadly wound doth hide to hilts, and gripping fast his throat in hand he to thrust him through. The sword then drawn away, when long the body had upheld itself in doubtful stay, which way to fall at length upon the uncle down it falls. And then to the altars cruelly, Philistines he trolls, and on his brother throws, and straight his neck off cutteth he. The carcass headlong falls to ground, a piteous thing to see. The mourning head with murmur yet uncertain doth complain. What after double death doth he and slaughter then of twain? Spes he the child, or, or guilt on guilt again, yet heapeth he? As long manned lion fierce amid the woods wood of Armony, the drove pursues and conquest makes of slaughter many one. Though now defiled be his jaws with blood and hunger gone, yet slaketh not his ireful rage with blood or bulls so great, but slothful now with weary tooth the lesser calves doth threat. None otherwise doth Atreus rage and swelled with anger strained. And holding now the sword in hand with double slaughter sta stain, regarding not where fell his rage with cursed hand and mild, he strake it through his body quite at bosom of the child. The blade goeth in and at the back again went out the same. He falls and quenching with his blood the altar's sacred flame. 
of either wound at length he dieth. O oh, heinous, hateful act! Abhor he this, ye hear not the end of all the fact, there falls more. If it's a thing or worse than this to see, could nature bear? Why think ye this of guilt the end to be? It is but part. What could he more to cruel beasts he casts, perhaps their bodies to be torn and kept from fires at last? Would God he had, that never tomb the dead might overhide, nor flames dissolve, though them for blood to foul and postures wide, he had outthrown, or them for, to, for prey to cruel beasts would fling. That which the worst was wont to be, were here a wished thing, that them their father saw untombed, but, oh, more cursed crime incredible, the which deny will men of after time. From bosoms yet alive outdrawn, the trembling bowels shake, the veins yet breathe, the fearful heart doth, yet doth both pant and quakes, but he the strings doth turn in hand, and destinies behold, and of the guts the signs each one doth view not fully called. When him the sacrifice that pleased, his diligence he puts to dress his brother's banquet now, and straight a fonder cuts in the bodies into quarters all, and by the stumps and on the shoulders wide and bronze of arms, he strikes off every one. He lays abroad their naked limes and cuts away the bones. The only heads he keeps and hands to him committed once. Some of the guts are broached, and in the fires that burn full slow, they drop the boiling liquor some doth tumble to and fro in morning cauldron from the flesh that sta overstands aloft to a fire doth fly and scatter out into the chimney and into chimney off to upheat again and there constrained by force to tarry yet unwilling burns the liver makes great noise upon the spit nor easily will what i if the flesh or flames they be that cry but cry they do, the fire like pitch it fumeth by and by, nor yet the smoke itself so sad, like filthy mist in sight, ascendeth up as wont it is, nor takes it his way upright. But even the gods and house it doth with filthy fume defile. O oh, patient Phoebus, though from hence thou backward flee the while, and in the midst of heaven above doth dost drown the broken day thou fleest too late the father eats his children well away and limbs to which he once gave life with cursed joy doth tear he shines with ointment shed full sweet all around about his hair replete with wine and oftentimes so cursed kind of food his mouth hath held that would not down but yet this one thing good in all thy ills Fiestes is that them thou dost not know. And yet, this shall that not long endure, though Titan backward go, and chariots against him, turn, turn against himself to meet the ways we went, and heavy night so heinous deed to keep from sight be sent. And out of time from east arise so foul a fact to hide, yet shall the whole world at length be seen. Yet shall the world, yet shall the whole at length be seen, thy ills shall all be spied. Which way, O oh, prince of lands and gods on high, at whose uprise eftsoons of shadowed night all beauty fleeth, which way turnst thou awry, and drawst the day in midst of heaven to flight? Why dost thou, Phoebus, hide from us thy sight? Yet not the watch that later hour brings in doth Vesper warn the stars to kindle light, nor yet doth turn of Hesper's wheel begin to loose thy chair his well-deserved way. The trumpet third hath not yet hath blown his blast while toward the night begins to yield the day. Great wonder hath of sudden supper's haste the plowman yet whose oxen are untired. From wonted course of heaven what draws thee back? What causes have from certain race conspired to turn thy horse? Do yet from dungeon black of hollow hell the conquered giants prove a fresh assault? Doth Titius yet assay with trenched heart and wounded womb to move the former ires? Or from the hill away hath now Typhaeus wound his side by might? 
Is up to heaven the way erected high of flegre foes by mountains set upright? And now doth Ossa Pelion overlie? The wonted turns are gone of day and night. The rise of sun nor fall shall be no more. Aurora, dewish mother of the light that wants to send the horses out before, doth wonder much again return to see her dawning light. She wots not how to case the weir she wots not how to cease the weary wheels, nor manes that smoking be of horse with sweat to bathe amid the seas. Himself unwonted there to lodge likewise doth setting sun against the mor morning sea, and now commands the darkness up to rise, before the night to come prepare it be. About the pole yet gloweth no fire in sight, nor light moon the shades doth comfort yet. Whatso it be, God grant it be the night, our hearts do quake with fear oppressed great. And dreadful are least heaven, lest heaven and earth and all with fatal ruin shaken shall decay. And lest on gods again and men shall fall disfigured chaos. And the land away, the seas and fires and of the glorious skies the wandering lamps. Lest nature yet shall hide. Now shall no more with blaze of his uprise the lord of stars that leads the world so wide of summer both and winter give the marks. Nor yet the moon with Phoebus flames that burns shall take from us by night the dreadful carks with swifter course or pass her brother's turns while compass less she fets in crooked race. Oh, compass less she fets in, ruin, in crooked race. The gods on heaps shall out of order fall, with each other mingled be in place. The riot way of holy planets all, with path a slope that doth divide the zones, that bears the signs and years in course doth bring, shall see the stars with him fall down at once. And he that first, not yet, with gentle spring, the temperate gale doth give to sails, the ram shall headlong fall adown to seas again through which he once with fearful Helen swam. Next him, the bull that doth with horns sustain the sisters seven, with him shall overturn the twins and arms of crooked cancer all, the lion hot that wants the soul to burn of Hercules again from heaven shall fall. To lands once left, the virgin shall be thrown and leveled pays of balance sway alow and draw with them the stinging scorpion down. So likewise he that holds in Thessaly bow his swift well-feathered arrows, Chiron old, shall break the same, and eke shall lease his shot. Capricorn that brings the winter cold shall overturn and break the water pot. Whoso thou be, and down with thee to ground, the last of all the signs shall Pisces fall, and monsters eke in seas yet never drowned, the water gulp shall overwhelm them all. And he which doth between each Ursa glide like crooked flood the, slipper, the slippery serpent twined, and lesser bear by greater dragon's side, full cold with frosts congealed hard by kind, and carter dull that slowly guides his wain unstable shall Boote's fall from high. We are thought meet of all men whom again should hugey heap of chaos overlie. And world oppress with overturned mass the latest age now fallest us upon. With evil hap we are begot, alas, if wretches we have lost the sight of sun. Or him by fraught and forced have to fly. Let our complaints yet go and fear be past. He greedy is of life that will not die when all the world shall end with him at last. And we go into Act 5, Scene 1, Atreus Alone. Now, equal with the stars I go, beyond each other white, with haughty head the heavens above, and highest pole I smite the kingdom now, and seat I hold where once my father reigned. I now let go the gods, for all my will I have obtained, enough and well, yea, even enough for me I am acquit. Why enough? 
I will proceed and fill the father yet with blood of his least any shame, with blood of his, lest any shame should me restrain at all. The day is gone, go to therefore, while thee the heaven doth call. Would God I could against their wills, yet hold the gods that flee, and of revenging dish constrain them witnesses to be. But yet, which well enough is wrought, let it the father see. In spite of all the drowned day, I will remove from thee the darkness all, in shade whereof do lurk thy miseries, and guest at such a banquet now, to long he careless lies, with merry face, now eat and drunk enough he hath at last, tis best himself should know his ills, ye servants, all in haste, undo the temple doors, and let the house be open all. Fain would I see, when look upon his children's heads he shall, what countenance he then would make, or in what words break out would first his grief, or how would quake his body round about with sprite and mazed sore. Of all my work, the fruit were this. I would him not a miser see, but while so made he is, behold the temple opened, now doth shine with many a light. In glittering gold and purple seat, he sits himself upright, and staying up his heavy head with wine upon his hand, he belcheth out. Now, chief of gods, in highest place I stand, and king of kings, I have my wish, and more than I could think. He filled is, he now the wine in silver bowl doth drink, and spare it not. There yet remains a worser draught for thee, that sprung out of the bodies late of sacrifices three. Which wine shall hide? Let therewithal the boards be taken up, the father mingled with the wine, his children's blood shall sup. That would have drunk of mine, but behold, behold he now begins to strain his voice and sings, nor yet for joy his mind may refrain. And Act 5, Scene 2, Thyestes Alone. O oh, beaten bosoms, dull so long with woe, lay down your cares, and let your griefs relent. Let sorrow pass, and all your dread let go, and fell a week of fearful banishment. Sad poverty and ill in misery, the shame of cares, more whence thy fall thou hast, then whether skills great hap to him from high that falls, it is in surety to be placed beneath, and great it is to him again, that pressed with storm or evils feels the smart of kingdom lost, the pieces to sustain with neck unbowed. Nor yet detective heart, nor overcome his heavy hap or ways to bear up right, but now of careful carts, shake of the showers, and of thy wretched days, away with all the miserable marks. To joyful state return thy cheerful face. Put for thy mind the old Thyestes hence. Is the one to wise in woeful case and state of joy to have no confidence? Though better haps to them return it be, the afflicted yet to joy it irketh sore. Why course thy mere back? And hindrously this happy day to celebrate. Wherefore, bid sadly, sorrow, grief, without a cause. Who does me let with flowers so fresh and gay to deck my hairs? It lets me, lets me withdraws. Down from my head the roses fall away. My moisted hair with ointment over all, with sudden maid stands up in wondrous wise. On face that would not weep, the streams do fall. And howling cries amid my word arise. My sorrow, yet the accustomed tears doth love, and wretches still delight to weep and cry. Unpleasant plaints it pleaseth them to move, and flourished bear it likes with Tyrian dye their robes to rent. To wail it likes them still. For sorrow sends, in sign that woes draw nigh, the mind that what's before of after ill. 
the sturdy storms the shipmen overlie. When void of wind, the assuaged seas do rest. What tumult yet or countenance to see makes thou mad, man? Then the trustful breast to brother Jean, wherever now it be, causeless or else too late thou art a dread. My wretch would not so fear, but yet me draws a ter trembling terror. Down mine eyes do shed their sudden tears, and yet I know no cause. Is it a grief or fear? Or else have tears great joy itself? And Act 5, Scene 3, Atreus enters to Thyestes. Let us this day with one consent, O brother, celebrate. This day my scepters may confirm and establish my estate, and faithful bond of peace and love between us ratify. Enough with meat, <clears throat> and eke with wine, now satisfied am I, but yet of all my joys, it were a great increase to see if now, by my side, I might my little children see. Believe that here, even in thine arms, thy children present be. For here they are, and shall be here. No part of them from thee shall be withheld. Their loved looks now give to thee I will, and with the heap of all his babes, thy father fully fill. Thou shalt be glutted, fear thou not. They with my boys, as yet the joyful sacrifices make at board where children sit. They shall be called the friendly cup now take of courtesy, with wine upfilled. O brother's feast, I take full willingly thy final gift. Shed some to the gods of this our father's land, and let the rest be drunk. What's this? In no wise will my hand obey. The peas increase the sore and down mine arm doth sway. And from my lips the wafting wine itself doth fly away. And in deceived mouth about my jaws it runneth round. The table too itself to shake and leap from trembling ground. Scant burns the fire. The air itself with heavy cheer to sight for suck of sun amaze it is between the day and night. What mean is this? And more and, and more of backward beaten sky the compass falls and thicker mist the world doth overlie than blackest darkness. Night in night itself doth hide. Will stars be fled? So what so it be, my brother, God provide and sons to spare. The God so grant that all this tempest fall on this vile head. Now restore to me, my children, all. I will, and never day again shall them from thee withdraw. What tumult tumbleth so my guts, and doth my bowels gnaw? Quakes within, with heavy peace, I feel myself oppressed, and with an other voice than mine bewails my doleful breast. Come near, my sons, for you now doth the unhappy father call. Come near, for you, on seeing this grief, would soon assuage and fall. Whence murmur they? With father's arms embrace them quickly now. For here they are low, come to thee. Dost thou thy children know? I know, my brother. Such a guilt, yet canst thou suffer well of earth to, O oh, earth to bear. Nor yet from hence to Stygian lake of hell, dost thou both drown thyself and us? Nor yet with broken ground dost thou the kingdoms and their king with chaos root confound. Nor yet, O renting from the soil the bowers of wicked land, dost thou my Cenus overturn with Tantalus to stand, and ancestors of ours, if there in hell be any one, now ought we both, 
Now from the frames on either side are none of ground all here and there, rent up out of thy bosom deep. Thy dens and dungeons set abroad and us enclosed keep in bottom low of Acheron. Above our heads aloft, let wander all the guilty ghosts with burning fret full off. Let fiery Phlegathon that drives his sands both to and fro to our confusion overrun and violently flow. Unshaken peace, unmoved, that yet art thou. The gods are fled. But take to thee with joy thy children now, and rather them embrace. At length thy children all of thee so long wished for. For no delay there standeth now in me. Enjoy and kiss embracing arms, divide thou unto three. Is this thy league? May this thy love and faith of brother be? And dost thou so repose thy hate? The father does not, not crave his sons alive, which might have been without thy guilt, to have and eke without thy hate. But this doth brother, brother, pray that them he may in tomb be restored, whom see thou shalt straightway be burnt. The father naught requires of thee, that have ye shall, but soon forgo. Whatever part yet of thy children all remains, here shalt thou have, and what remaineth not thou host. What, lie they in fields of food? outflung for fleeing souls to us? Or are they kept a prey for wild and brutish beasts to eat? Thou hast devoured thy sons and filled thyself with wicked meat. Oh, this is it. Chain the gods. The day from hence did drive, turn back to east. Alas, <laughs> what wailings may I give, or what complaints, what woeful words may be enough for me? Their heads cut off, hands off, torn, I from their bodies see it. Wretched feet from broken thighs I here behold again. It is this that greedy father could not suffer to sustain. In belly roll my bowels round and closed crime so great without a passage strives within and seeks a way to get. My sword rather lend to me much of my blood, alas, it hath. Let us therewith make way for all my sons to pass. Is yet the sword from me withheld? Thyself thy bosoms tear, and let thy breast resound with strokes. Yet, wretch, thy hand forbear, and spare the dead. Whoever saw such mischief put in proof, what? Rude Heniochus that dwells by ragged coast, aloof of Caucasus on apt men, or fear to Athens who protrust these wild. The father, I oppress my children, do, and am oppressed. Is any mean of guilt or mischief yet? A mean in mischief ought to be when guilt thou dost commit, nor when thou nor when thou quits, for yet even this too little seems to me. The blood yet warm even from the wound I should in sight of these, even in thy laws have shed, that thou the blood of them mightst drink, that lived, lived yet. But while too much to haste my hate I think, my wrath beguiled is myself with sword the wounds them gave, I strike them down, the sacred fires with slaughter vowed I have, well pleased, the carcass cutting then, and lifeless limbs on ground. I have in little parcels chopped, and some of them I drowned in boiling cauldrons, some to fires that burn full slow I put, 
and made to drop their sinews all and limbs are too I cut, even yet alive and on the spit. That thrust was through the same. I heard the liver wail and cry, and with my hand the flame I oft kept in. But every whit the father might of this have better done. But now my wrath too lightly ended is. He rent his sons with wicked gun, himself yet wotting naught, nor they thereof. Oh, ye enclosed with bending banks about all seas, we hear to this guilt, ye gods. Now hearken well, whatever place ye fled are to hear all ye sprites of hell. And here, ye lands, at night so dark that them dost overlie with clouds so black to my complaints do than thyself apply. To thee now left I am, thou dost alone me miserly. Thou art left without thy stars. I will not make for me petitions yet, nor aught for me require may aught yet be that me should veil, for you shall all my wishes now foresee. Thou guide a great of skies above, and prince of highest might, heavenly place, now all with clouds full horrible to sight, enwrap the world, and let winds on every side break out, and send the dreadful thunderclap through all the world about, nor with what hand thou guiltless house, and undeserved wall with lesser bolt and want to beat, but with the which did fall three unheaped mountains once, in which the hills in height stood equal up, the giants huge, throw out such weapons straight and fling thy fires, and therewithal revenge the drowned day. Let flee thy flames. The light was lost and hid from heaven away with flashes fill. The cause, lest long thou shouldst out whom to hit, of each of us is ill. But not at least let mine. It. Me strike with triple edged tool thy brand of flaming fire. Be through this breast. If father I my children to desire to lay in tomb or corpses cast a fire as doth behoove, I must be burnt. If nothing now the gods to wrath may move, nor power from skies with thunderbolt none strikes the wicked men, yet let eternal night remain and hide with darkness then the world about. I, Titan, not complain as now it stands, if still thou hide thee thus away. Now praise I well my hands. Now got I have the palm. I had been overcome of thee, except thou sawest so, but now even children born to me I compt, and now of bridebed chaste the faith I do repair. In what offended hath my sons? In that that thine they were. Set thou the sons for father's food? I do, and which is best, the certain sons. The gods that guide all infants, I protest! What, wedlock gods? Who would the guilt with guilt so quite again? I know thy grief prevented now with wrong thou dost complain. Nor this in thee irks that fed thou art with food of cursed kind, but that thou hadst not it prepared, for so it was thy mind, such meats as these to set before thy brother, wotting naught, and by the mother's help to have likewise my children caught and then with such like to slay this one thing lettered thee thou thoughts them thine god shall all of his revengeance be and unto them for vengeance due my vows thee render shall but vexed be i thee the while give to thy children all Act 5, Scene 4, added to the tragedy by the translator, Thyestes Alone. O oh, king of Titus' dungeon dark and crystally ghosts of hell, that in the deep and dreadful dens of blackest tartar dwell, 
where lean and pale diseases lie, where fear and famine are, where discord stands with bleeding brows, where every kind of care, where furies fight in beds of steel and hairs of crawling snakes, where gorgon grim, where harpies are and loathsome limbo lakes, where most prodigious ugly things the hollow hell doth hide. If yet a monster more misshapen than all that there do abide, that makes his brood his cursed food, ye all abhor to see. Nor yet the deep heaven itself may bide to cover me. No grisly gates of Pluto's place yet dare themselves to spread, nor gaping ground to swallow him, gods and day. Break ye out from cursed seats, and here remain with me. Ye need not now to be afraid, the air and heaven to see. No triple-headed Cerberus, thou needs not be afright. The day unknown to thee to see, or else the loathsome light. They both be fled, and now doth dwell on other countenance here, and doth beneath the foulest face of hateful hell appear. A meetest match for thee, a more than monstrous womb that is of his unhappy brood become a cursed tomb. Flock here, ye foulest fiends of hell, and thou, O oh, grandsire great, come see the glutted guts of mine with such a kind of meat as thou didst once for gods prepare. Let torments all of hell now fall upon this hateful head that deserve them well. You'll be plagued wrongfully, your guilt be small in sight of mine, and meet it where your pangs on me alone should light. Now thou, O oh grandsire, guiltless art, meet a were for me with fleeing flood to be beguiled and fruit is not free. Thou slewest thy son, but I, my son, alas, have made my guilt. I could thy famine better bear. My paunch is now replete with food, and with my children three, my belly is extent. Oh, filthy fowls and gnawing gripes that Tetius bosom rent. Behold, a fitter prey for you to fill yourselves upon than are the growing guts of him. Four wombs enwrapped in one, this paunch at once shall fill you all. If ye abhor the food, nor may yourselves abide to bathe in such a cursed blood, yet bend to me your clinching claws. Pray a while, forbear, and with your talons suffer me this monstrous maw to tear. Oh, whirling wheels with swinge of wits, it still is rolled. Your books upon this glutted gorge would catch a surer hold. Uh, filthy flood of limbo lake and stygian pool so dire, from chocked channel belch abroad. Thou fearful fret of fire, spew out thy flames, O Phlegathon, and overshed the ground with vomit of thy fiery sea. Let me and earth be drowned. Break up thou soil from bottom deep, and give thou room to hell, where night, where day, that ghosts, where gods were wont to reign, may dwell. Why gapes thou not? Why do you not, O gates of hell, unfold? Why do ye thus infernal fiends so long from hence withhold? Are you likewise afraid to see and know so wretched wight, from whom the gods have right their looks and turned it out of light? O oh, hateful head, whom heaven and hell have shunned and left alone. Stars, the light, the day, the gods, the ghosts be gone. And turn again ye skies a while, ere quite ye go from me. Take vengeance first on him whose fault enforceth you to flee. 
It needs ye must your fight prepare, and may no longer bide, but roll ye must with you forth with the gods and sun aside. Yet slowly flee, a tired length may you yet overtake. While wandering ways I after you, and speedy journey make, by seas, by lands, by woods, by rocks, in dark I wander shall, and on your wrath for right reward to due deserts will call. Ye escape now from me, so ye gods, still after you I go, and vengeance ask on wicked white your thunderbolt to throw. And thus ends uh, the uh, the addition to the tragedy by the translator, um, because as we were all thinking there, what this play really needed was a, another speech. Um, uh, though I did actually quite like it. Um, uh, and there is an interesting odd... Uh, Eric put it in the chat um, about sort of... It's, it's a slightly odd ending if it ended just on uh, Atreus's line there it doesn't quite land so having some sort of revenge speech is quite nice um, though how much a revenge speech you wish to have is of course down to the individual reader um, and of course we're sort of looking at two texts which are um, you know uh, as, as, as designed for reading as as they are for performance, you know that the, both the original and and the uh, and the translation. So it's an interesting question whether um, sustaining speeches is in performances uh, is actually a fair call uh, for a text like this. Um, you know, I have to say I, I did enjoy reading it, um, and, and I say it is slightly outside uh, or you know on the fringes of our primary uh, uh, work, as it were. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, um, you know, Act Five, some good stuff in Act Five. I mean, it's grim, but it's a good situation. There's something very voyeuristic about Atreus's speech about Thyestes uh, eating and the, the stuff. It's like he's watching him while he's doing it. It's like he's he's on stage actually with him and he's just talking um, uh, uh, before the reveal. Um, and yeah, so there's there's all sorts of interesting possibilities there that I, I do like. Um, uh, Eric, the bit I didn't get was the bit I was reading where uh, you know the whole wood and forest and trees and highest oak and all that stuff, and I'm like, okay, well, how is this relevant to the story? <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. It was it was quite um, interesting to read. It, it takes a while to get to the point of what the messenger is actually relating that you know children being chopped up uh, stuff. Um, Stephen, yeah, the. The, the final speech brought some of those kind of disparate elements together, really. I was wondering, you know, there was, it was, was really peculiar. You had this incredible sort of description of the of the children. And then it went off into sort of, you know, individual signs of the Zodiac and all of that. And I'm thinking, that this is, you know, this is a bit too much of a switch. Um, and the only way I could rationalise it was to think, well, perhaps, you know, it's another kind of apocalypse, as it were. You know, perhaps perhaps it did make sense to me because I'm not really worried about stuff like that. But then again, I'm not sort of, you know, two and a half thousand years ago, ancient Greek, am I? And the thing that the speech at the end does really well, I think, is it combines a sort of sense of um, personal apocalypse and, and complete apocalypse. You know, the, 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 the sort of sm the small thing is linked to the big thing. And I think that without that, I mean, I think it does that speech does quite a nice job in balancing some some of those earlier elements out because we, we you know it's the, the the kind of interpersonal stuff is so gross and so uh gripping that it just seems like um you know we've just got a load of pearl and dean or something in the middle of it you know we've got a load of adverts for local curry houses or something we go, no can we get back to the main feature please <laughs> you know and and that speech at the end helped me make sense of that a bit more that sense that you know it's a it's sort of dominoes isn't it mm. you know uh one taboo goes the whole thing falls mm. uh other thoughts uh liza then eric yeah i mean i think part of the original legend is that on the day when this happened the sun went backwards in the sky there's definitely something about the sun going backwards 
which may well just be an eclipse or something, but um, it's the whole thing of the heavens unfixing themselves and the zodiac coming unmoored. And as you say, it's also a personal apocalypse. But if we're in a if we're in a Greek mythological universe where all of the where the zodiacal signs are are people and the sun is controlled by a person and you know that they're all so horrified by this deed they just abandon themselves yeah and they switch the lights off for a bit um yeah uh eric yeah i was just gonna put it in the chat about the, the sun going backwards it was supposed to be well at least according to one of the many legends in this it's like supposedly zeus or aka jupiter in the roman calendar uh and roman um uh, sorry, Pantheon, um, was kind of, uh, for some reason, forced the forced Atreus to tell Theestes that, uh, or forced one of the brothers anyway, to say that the sun is going to go backwards because, you know, uh, that was what, what um, I don't know, so it was something to do with the vow anyway. And then in order to avoid um, perjury, basically, <laughs> the sun decided, you know, Helios decided to go backwards um which was kind of weird but also i mean kind of cool to have the favor of that kind of god on your side um uh, well actually i what i was gonna say is that um what stephen was saying earlier was that like um the that description by the messenger is just so graphic <laughs> like yes he took them one by one and pulled out their guts and did this and um it just felt like you know he was there and i'm like okay so why didn't you interfere if you were there yeah this messenger is complicit on some level here there's again there's a there's a voyeuristic quality here um that 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 might be thing um it's everyone like really like really was paying attention when the oh sorry L L lalit no, i was just saying it's a bit like kind of war journalists reporting on kind of really awful things and they're kind of filming it but not <laughs> taking part it's yeah. Mm. Uh, Stephen. Yeah, I, I was, I was kind of expecting something a little more, a little bit more Schwarzenegger -y in the revenge side of things. You know, I, I thought there would be something kind of some payback, and I thought it was, yeah. it was striking. You know, I, I, I don't know if anyone else caught it. I had a look at the cheek by jowl, um, revengers tragedy that was was up last week, and I was just thinking, oh. you know. Um, but actually, he spends that last speech asking the gods to kind of revenge themselves on him on behalf of a sort of outraged natural order. You know, this kind of uh, um, we're back. We're into sort of level of sort of pollution taboos or something, aren't we? He's, he's really beyond the pale. And that's uh, uh, it was just something that really blindsided me. You know, I was expecting some action. And what I got was this incredible sort of sense of, you know, the, the only appropriate thing is for me, to, the entire natural world to sort of turn on me and revenge itself upon me for what I've done. But, you know, I mean, it's kind of not his fault, is it? Mm. In that sense. Do, do you know, the, the, the punishment and the crime uh, are, are nowhere near one another. And yet the enormity of what's happened is um, comes across really nicely in that final speech where all that horrible stuff has actually got a purpose it's not just tourism you know this sort of elucidation of all these terrible things is 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 so that you know he, he can say all the terrible things he wants to happen to him hmm. Uh, we are, uh, because we've condensed uh, a lot of uh, text into one session, we are very short on time. Um, we have nine other uh, of the ten tragedies uh, translated in the uh, 1560s, um, but we're going to sort of filter them in every so often um, and see how they, they fit into the theatrical world uh, that comes after them um, because uh, they were hugely influential and uh, little lines and things pop in and out um so all that remains is thank all the wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading thank you very much everyone and goodbye i heard the w liver wail and cry <laughs>